The Division, an upcoming open world shooter from Ubisoft, is the latest video game where players have accused the PC version of being downgraded. In essence, PC owners are upset the visual fidelity of the PC version may have been held back or downgraded because the game also has to come out on less technically capable consoles like the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. The reason people are chatting about this right now is because an unnamed developer on The Division answered a question about the PC version during a video with YouTube creator Team Epiphany. As a game dev, do you guys ever get like restricted based on consoles? Like as far as what you can do, just because it's like we know we could do this on a PC, but we have to make a game for consoles too. It is definitely a, a benefactor in it. Um, but one good thing about the division is we've always considered the PC as a separate platform. I've worked on projects before that the PC versions are port from a console, so it yeah. carries that limitations over, but. We've always been in the mind that we'll have a dedicated PC build, so it hasn't really held it back too much. That's awesome. Um, we do have to kind of keep it in check with the consoles. So it'd kind of be unfair just to push it so far away from them. Or, but it's been good having a dedicated PC build Remember for this game. Me. No one here used the term downgraded, not the interviewer, not the developer. Instead, the developer provided a refreshingly honest answer about the realities of making a video game for multiple platforms. The PC version of The Division does look better on the PC, based on every analysis I've seen. But the developer is also saying, look, it's still the same game and there are certain realities when you're making a game on three platforms at once. And yet, that immediately translated to a bunch of articles about the game being downgraded. In this case, the backlash seems ridiculous and unwarranted, but the reason it exists has a history in PC culture. Not that long ago, game publishers didn't play the PC platform much mind. Headlines about the death of the PC were rampant, they were everywhere, but thanks to services like Steam, which consolidated lots of PC players under a single storefront and proved they were willing to pay money, the PC has become a dominant platform. For example, Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain was released on Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC at the same time last year. Just a few years ago, a major Japanese video game coming day and date on PC would have been basically unimaginable. But not all PC ports are created equal, and the definition of downgraded is a fuzzy one. Ubisoft was accused of downgrading a few years ago with the release of Watch Dogs, and to be honest, people really did have a point. Digital Foundry tried to recreate scenarios from the E3 2012 demo of Watch Dogs in the version that shipped roughly two years later, and definitely found the visuals to be less impressive. The question is whether it's fair to say a game's visuals changing from announcement to release is actually a downgrade, or if that's a game's potential crashing into the realities of shipping that game. When modders found additional graphics options for Watch Dogs in the game's code, including references to the old E3 demo, it pissed a lot of people off. Watch Dogs was basically ground zero for the idea of downgraded games, and Ubisoft was forced to respond in a statement. The dev team is completely dedicated to getting the most out of each platform, so the notion that we would actively downgrade quality is contrary to everything we set out to achieve. We test and optimize our games for each platform on which they're released, striving for the best possible quality. The PC version does indeed contain some old, unused render settings that were deactivated for a variety of reasons. It's easy to roll your eyes at Ubisoft, though. The company has a poor history of releasing competent PC ports for multi-platform games. You wouldn't say the same thing about CD Projekt Red, the developers of The Witcher games, and yet they were embroiled in a very similar controversy when The Witcher 3 was released last year. There are a few developers who seem to care more about the PC platform than CD Projekt Red, but while The Witcher 2 eventually came out on Xbox 360, The Witcher 3 was the first time the studio was developing for consoles at the same time. And yet when The Witcher 3 was released, folks grilled the CD Projekt Red for downgrading the game. They criticized the way the fire looked, they criticized the level of detail in the world, they criticized the lack of lighting. This caused an enormous controversy around one of 2015's best games, and CD Projekt Red co-founder Marcin Iwinski eventually responded in an interview with Eurogamer. If you're looking at the development process, we do a certain build for a trade show and you pack it, it works, it looks amazing, and you are extremely far away from completing the game. Then you put it in an open world regardless of the platform, and it's like, oh shit, it didn't really work. We already showed it, now we have to make it work. And then we try to make it work on a huge scale, that is the nature of game development. With The Division, Watch Dogs, and The Witcher 3, you have developers overpromising when their games were announced, then scaling back as development reached the finish line. Are those developers lying? I don't think so. Were players overreacting? A little bit. 
PC players tend to expect the best because it's ingrained into PC culture. How else does the gross sounding PC master race phrase exist? But for many, playing on PC is about ownership, customization, and a best in class experience at all costs. So the idea of a PC version being downgraded to keep pace with consoles is seen as an insult. This may seem an unreasonable way to look at game development, but given the track record many developers have with PC, a little suspicion is warranted. I mean, everyone remembers how bad Batman Arkham Knight was on the PC. It was such a disaster the game had to be pulled from Steam, and even months later, it doesn't run that great. And that's to say nothing of games like Dark Souls or Tales of Symphonia, subpar ports that were ultimately saved by fans who stepped in, not the developers themselves. With both games, a fan by the name of Durante single-handedly added the PC-specific options that fans expect as a bare minimum for a PC version. That's not how this is supposed to work. The developer who spoke about The Division didn't deserve the flack he got. He was being honest about game development. He got burned because of mistrust. Watch Dogs and Witcher 3 had one thing in common. Players felt deceived. It may have been unintentional, it may have been the natural consequences of game development, but it's one thing for a developer to come forward and say, hey, here's what changed before you fork over $60. It's way different when modders force your hand. It makes it seem like you had something to hide. When that happens over and over, it breeds a toxic assumption of doubt that doesn't help anyone player and developer alike. Downgrade is the wrong term here. The word people should be using here is respect. Games change and expectations change, but if you respect players, they will respect you back. If you treat a platform and its supporters like an afterthought, don't be surprised if they end up criticizing you for it and becoming awfully cynical. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, that's awesome. I'm happy for you. There's tons of other stuff around here. You might have watched me die tomorrow. You might have watched me scream at horror games. You might have watched me react to trailers with my wife. You might have watched me share some of the coolest video games out there you never heard of. There's lots going on on the site. YouTube, so that means what? You have to, you have to like, you have to comment, you have to subscribe. All those things help the channel. All those things help me. And I really appreciate if you become part of the community over here. Thanks so much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in another one.